day all, my name's David Spicer and today we're going to run through find a lovely tree like this in the forest. We'll bring up the Lucas Mill, port of the sawmill and uh, once it's down we'll uh, cut it into the lengths that we want and mill it up into building timber. So just basically I'll run through what I'm going to do. What you're doing when you're falling the tree is you you're going around to the four sides of the tree. You know, although the tree's around, there is a sort of four sides in a sense. Uh, if I look up here, <coughs> and I'm looking at the trunk, and uh, where it's leaning, but I'm also looking at all the leaves and the branches up top, because that's where the weight is. So I'm going around, and I've had a look at this tree a few times, and I'm going, okay, the tree, the tree itself, wants to go pretty well northwest out that way okay what we're aiming to do and literally aiming with what they call a gun barrel sights on a chainsaw which is this line here so basically when when we do our scarf which is this mark here um, <coughs> we come in here and where I want the tree to go I line that line up and I want it to go through that gap there Obviously it's wanting to go that way, so we're going to steer it around and drop it through there. So first of all, what I kind of like to do is mark out what's called your scarf, here. Okay, that's your scarf, your face cut, a few other terms for it. Um, and then I'll come around the back and I'll mark me what that's called the back cut. And that'll come right around to the, the other side of the scarf. But what we're never doing is this piece of wood here. Right, we're leaving that. That's called your hinge wood or your guide wood or your holding wood. It's basically like the, the hinge on the door. It steers the tree. It sort of leans, it allows the tree to fall that way. So we never cut that. Even if the tree wants to sit back on the chainsaw, this is what we got this wedge for. When we put our back cut in, we start the back cut, we whack the wedge in. We know then the tree can't sit back on the chainsaw or can't go back that way because it's sitting on that wedge. I've also brought a hammer up. So when I get in there, if the tree does look like it's coming back, I can stick the wedge in and give it a few taps. Keep cutting. Um, keep watching the top. Because there's lots of dead branches up there, there's other trees that it's going to touch. And when you start moving this, there's a lot of movement up there. They can drop out and they call them widow makers. Which, even though I'm not married and I've got my beautiful darling wife here. Well, I call her my wife. Um, yeah, I, I still want to live, live a little bit longer. Um, so that's what we're doing. Although chainsaw is very dangerous, I nearly take the chainsaw on rather than the tree. So. When I'm cutting, I'm constantly glancing from here up to there to watch. And as soon as I see that tree starting to move, I know I'm starting to get through. I'm also watching if the gap here is closing or widening. As soon as if it's widening, I know the tree's wanting to go that way. If it's starting to lay back and close that gap, that's where my wedges come in. I've already put that in and I can just tap it and jack it over basically. And like I say, we want to drop it straight through that gap there and hope all goes well. But falling on a tree is something that you don't take lightly. Uh, it's a reasonable sized tree. It's not a big tree. It's probably around 40, 45 years old. Uh, it's a beautiful mill log. Um, and we're lucky enough to have quite a few mill logs here. Uh, plenty of regrowth, so we actually need to go through and take out the mature logs and let the little stuff size up. So, here we go.
Right. That's our scar. Uh -huh. General rule is a thirty tree. So that's about half. <coughs> so we're going thirty-three percent or a third into the face. And as I was saying, if the gun barrel sights, that tree should go there according to this line. And that's how you're doing it. Alright? So now I'm going to send my darling away that she can zoom in on me <laughs> while I come around and I put the back cut in. As I said before, as soon as I get the back cut in, I'll drive the wedge in, continuously watch the top, and drop it through that gap there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right back. Okay, here we are again guys. So as you can see, that was our scarf. Um, I was just trying to find, but so that went in there, that's my back cut. I never cut my guidewood. That was the scarf that sat in there, remember guys? There it is there on the tree. Um, my chainsaw is a little bit small, but that's just because I'm a poor bastard. Um, and ideally, with a bigger saw, you can do a straight cut across here. I've had to come in from both sides. Ideally, I would have liked to have went in a little bit more and left an equal holding wood. But your holding wood, as it's a hinge, if you take more off this side, it's going to want to send the tree that way. Okay? So pretty well, we dropped it where we said. Could have been a couple of foot to the mm. left, but that's cool. Mm. At least it didn't go that way, which is wanted to. Um, but you can see how important your hinge wood is. Um, once you've got your scarf in, you do your back cut, you come up off your bottom of your scarf so the tree can't kick back when it breaks, um, which they do do. Uh, so that's it. That's your holding wood, your god wood, your hinge wood, and that's why it's so important because that hinges your tree down. You can see it here. That was the scarf we put in. I come up with 50 mil. Um, started coming in with my back cut. And you can see that's, so I cut that, I cut that. And that's what actually broke. When the tree started moving, I drove that wedge in. Put that wedge in. 
So that sat in there. So I knew the tree couldn't come back, jam the saw, or come back and fall that way. And I just keep smacking that wedge in. Um, I actually hit it a little bit with a chainsaw, but that's why they're plastic, or you can get aluminium ones, which are even better. Um, so you don't worry about that. Worth your life, definitely. Um, I had a hard hat, because, you know, I'm all about safety. Um, just to stop dead branches. When I was following the tree, I was continuously watching the head of it to make sure that nothing was dropping out. Because as soon as it starts moving, you only got to need a few then dead branches up there to break off. And from that height, even something, you know, an inch or so round could probably give you a bloody headache anyway. All right, guys, well, tomorrow uh, we're going to bring the mill up. We'll dock the logs into length. Um, set the mill up and we'll film that as well. Have a good day and I hope you learned something.